Banished by the devil to a life on earth in human form, the Violator is at a loss for what to do next. Faced with unaccustomed silence from down below, he's biding his time until he can figure a way to get back his lost powers. Normally, a misshapen embodiment of horror. With protruding horns and talons, he is now stuck in a three foot ten inch body, looking like a miniature sumo wrestler gone to seed. Bad seed. He is the victim of his own failure to fulfill his master's wishes. On his last mission, the violator's orders were to provoke the newly arrived spawn to experiment with his powers. Instead of staging a direct attack, the violator decided to draw the spawn out by going on a killing spree. By dismembering some of New York's top mafia dons, the Violator hoped to attract the mob and the police into a two-pronged attack against Spawn, the new powerful costume player in the area. Instead, the Violator only complicated matters. After all, there was nothing to link Spawn with the weirdly brutal killings. In fact, that senseless assault caused the crime cartel to become cautious for a while. Crime actually went down for a few percentage points. From the Devil's point of view, this was unacceptable. For hell to prosper, evil must gain new ground, and the Violator was to blame for this sorry state of decline. As a punishment, the Violator has lost access to his monstrous, most powerful form. Our rotund Violator, the world-class idiot, simply didn't get it. Figuring that he's merely been replaced by the new Hellspawn, he decided to take a reasoned approach and build some support at the grassroots. If he can impress the young with his magnificent skills and devil-may-care philosophy, his master may look kindly upon the eventual diseased resource of his influence. Clint, Mark, and Spaz, three citizens of the streets have been drafted as observers for his one-man battle of wits. He's been telling them of a campaign against another spawn. Fought nearly 800 years ago. This tale, we are quick to point out, involves two victims. The spawn and the facts. The violator clears his throat, spits impressively and continues. You heard me. I completely flame broiled the little booger. Ah, so you're a fire breather as well as an 800-year-old fighting stud. Exactly! And fortunately for you boys, there's more to my tale of bravery. As I was saying, since the daylight had gone, I had to poke around to make sure that my foe was, in actuality, dead. I scoured the charred remains for verification. The spawn wizard was a very crafty individual, so I didn't want to make any mistakes. The boss usually liked proof. He's always been picky like that. Since I couldn't find any of Spawn's remains, my proof would have to be found elsewhere. Your boyfriend is finished, dear maiden. I hope you don't mind if I ask you to join him. If I brought the boss the head of Spawn's wicked mother, that would be my evidence. Only if Spawn were truly dead would I have been allowed to decapitate the witch herself. Please, for the love of God, I beg you. Your God is my enemy, so beg all you want. I hope he's listening. Because of all the pain she and her offspring brought to the neighboring lands, I wanted to make sure that she died slowly. I wanted her to suffer, like all those innocent victims her son tortured. So, I began to cut her. Slowly. I rejoiced at every scream, savoring the moment. I could almost taste victory. But something was wrong. I couldn't quite put my finger on it. But this was all going down far too easily. <laughs> then, 
I heard his voice. His horrific form stood directly behind me. Obviously, I had only burned his armor, not his flesh. Like I said, he was a tricky son of a gun. This finger is but the first of many pieces I shall cut from your satanic body. How dare you touch my maiden? How dare you use her to get at me? I'd have thought the creatures of hell had more courage than to hide behind offenseless women. Has your creator become such a coward? Teleporting out of his battle gear was pretty slick. He's your creator too! My prince, your body. What has happened to you? Already weary from our initial struggles, I didn't know how much longer I could last. I'm still amazed at how long I endured the two-sided attack from the spawn wizard and his mother. Blow after blow I withstood, yet somehow I knew I would overcome. The people of that land needed me. I couldn't fail them. The good people who put their faith in me. My lady is but a child. An artistic soul. Her handiworks are things of joy. Of beauty. Tomorrow she may paint of my victory. Of how the devil was thwarted in his challenge to my skills. Tell your master that I will never be his puppet. Not now. Not ever! Our epic battle continued. With my superior skills, I was quickly able to overcome the witch. As panic took hold, her spells became increasingly less effective. I was now free to concentrate exclusively on her son. Her cold black eyes witnessed every measure of harm I could inflict upon her boy. It warmed my heart. How many times? Had they cackled sadistically while stripping the flesh from a crying baby? I asked myself. Probably more times than Eva could remember. Even murder can become tedious, I suppose. Well, it was high time that someone turned the table on those two. Showing them for the monsters they were. My prince. What have you become? Soon, I gained the advantage again. The boss had trained me well in the ways and weaknesses of the spawn. For instance, when faced with an overwhelming threat, a seasoned spawn will instinctively rely on his physical skills. Only rarely will he feel at risk enough to drain any of his energy in response. These spawn wizards are as skilled at hand-to-hand -hand combat as any man or creature that may challenge them. Sensing a slight imperfection in my plan of attack, he fainted, then struck. My overconfidence had betrayed me. I had been relieved of my faithful broadsword. Now completely vulnerable, I had to think quickly. Breathing fire at him was the only type of attack I hadn't tried yet. On careful consideration, I decided not to use that ace up my sleeve. Yet, the wizard had to be closer for my flames to be effective. I had to wait for him to come in nice and tight and attempt his killing blow before my last gallant attempt at victory was put to the test. He didn't fail me. With lightning speed, I pounced on him. Though he was much larger than I, my grit and determination were clearly traits new to his experience. I swear by what life remains that you shall pay for the lives of these villagers. What kind of monster would eat the hearts of children? A very hungry, deserving one. Though I must confess, I do prefer the hearts of grown humans. They are far meatier, with lots and lots of flavor. A child's organs aren't nearly as ripe. Damn your soul. Ah, dear boy, 
You're far too late for that. I serve the Master and the Darkness. He wished to see if you were worthy of a place in his army. Wanted to know if you could be a leader. It'll be my pleasure to tell him that I, a native of hell, am far better qualified than some Earthborn beginner. Then my moment of truth. It was now or never! The battle was finally over. Please don't hurt me. Don't. You have nothing to fear, my love. I did only what was necessary to protect you. That my true appearance was revealed to you is unfortunate. You now understand why you've never seen me without armor. I needed you to want me for myself. I'm truly sorry if I've hurt you in any way. I swear, I meant you no harm. Stay away! Please! Leave me alone, monster! Help! Please! Somebody help! Don't do this to me. Somehow, the evil witch escaped into the night. And even that worked to my advantage. She was never quite the same after that fight, repeating the story over and over. I beg you. So, my legend was born. The witch's witless retellings became more erratic as she wandered from village to hamlet. Over the generations, other storytellers have rendered the story with whimsy and magnificence. You want proof? It's as close as your nearest library. Though the pictures aren't quite right. My legacy is endured. I was the first dragon. It's not the name I give myself, and I don't know why they colored me green, but hey, that's showbiz. I'm not complaining. As for my boss, well, suffice it to say, he was pleased with my work. Excellent, dear child. You have done a most admirable job. Not only did you prove that my new spawn has the potential to become a fine officer, you also managed to destroy the only thing he held dear. Another's love for him. I now make you whole again. You served me well. Well, there you have it, boys. Not only did I get a raise, but I put dragons, that is me, into Western culture. Kinda beautiful, ain't it? Bozo. Loser. Uh. Why, you ungrateful swine! After all the cash I laid out, too. Why, I oughta. <laughs> That's it. No more, Mr. Nice Guy. When I get finished with those little rugrats, they'll wish. What's this? Police still have no leads in mysterious deaths of New York crime lords. The victims were brutally murdered in their offices. One line of investigation is directed towards a renegade Youngblood type or Shadowhawk-inspired wacko. Even alleged kingpin Tony Twist had sent for the protection in the form of the Italian bodyguard Overt Kill. Twist angrily lays blame at the feet of those costume do-gooders. What? It's time I paid Mr. Twist a little visit. Ain't no way someone else is getting credit for my kills. Especially, not that punk spawn. Sleep. Though it is no longer as necessary as it had been, Al Simmons strictly by habit rests daily. His new circumstance as an agent of evil from deep in the bowels of some netherworld hasn't erased his humanistic self-image. Habits. Routines. In these new times, they are his only source of tranquility, if you will, for escape. Hey, bud, how many times I gotta tell you creeps to stay away from the back door? You hear me? I'm getting tired of you trying to steal the food scraps from Mr. Nanose's restaurant. Thought I made myself clear last time. You must be the deaf one of the bunch. <clears throat> okay, okay. Take it easy. No sense getting in such a big huff. I'll be out of your way in a minute.
Didn't know someone could take such pride in protecting scraps of leftover liver. Oh, smartass, eh? I don't need no grief from some two-bit drunk loser, get me? Gah! As it happens, Al was getting up to leave when the muscle-bound stiff challenged him. Years ago, Al's military training taught him that not every confrontation leads to battle. That there are times when a peaceful retreat is a good strategy. It took Lieutenant Colonel Al Simmons a long time to grasp that notion. His instincts told him that every situation had to be settled right there on the spot. Fortunately, he learned better. As his missions became more and more secretive, Al developed a rapport of subtle reactions. That need has never been greater. His total energy is limited. Al, a.k.a. Spawn, needs to keep his physical conflicts to a minimal. I'll break your nose, smartass. Power usage would be stupid right now. Damn it. I said I'd leave. You're right. In a body bag. Some days it doesn't pay to try and be nice. <sighs> Luckily for him, Al needn't rely solely on his powers to take care of himself. Hold still, Tubby. I want to show you something. Get the picture now. I could have rammed these boards so far through those beady little eyes that your brains would be oozing out the sockets. You see, I don't like being muscled, especially when I said I'd leave. Now then, unless you want me to get really pissed off, I suggest we switch roles. It's my turn to ask you to leave. Pronto! Y yes sir! Getting tired of people constantly invading my turf. I just might have to send out a long, loud signal. This is Spawn territory. We know you've been messing with us, Fitzgerald. No one likes a rat. So you better be a good boy, and hope we don't find nothing incriminating. Cause if we do, there ain't no place you're gonna be able to hide from us. And when we find you, words can't describe the kind of pain we can inflict. Well. Gotta go. Kiss that beautiful wife of yours for me. She sure is a looker. I've been watching her for almost three weeks now. Pretty sexy nightgown she's been wearing. You son of a bitch. Now, now, Terry. It's a dirty job, but somebody's gotta do it. Kiss that baby of yours for me, too. It will be nearly 20 minutes before Terry moves. Another 40 before he stops sweating. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a like and subscribe to become part of the Al Simmons army. Also, follow the Twitter for more updates. Malabolgia, just you wait.